Welcome to another episode of our Downtown Jiu Jitsu Club podcast. Um, your friend Adam here with my friends Doug, Meek, and the protein poppy, Mr. George. And uh, we're here today with a short episode. We got uh, our hands full today. We got off to a little bit of a late start. And um, but yeah, we're going to give you a quick recap on this last weekend's events. Um, before we do, uh, do you guys have anything you want to get off your chest, you want to discuss before we get into this weekend's topics? These new angles actually look pretty good. Yeah. I actually liked it. Oh, very cool. The only thing I like to get off my chest this is, is my opponent when he's inside control. <laughs> oh, I didn't say a barbell. Yeah, uh, this weekend it was, I think it went pretty good. All things considered, mm. we, uh, we got the job done. Yeah, it was, it was a good event. It, it went smooth. I feel like people had a good time. It didn't look like we were going to get the job done, right? <laughs> it looked like the, Friday the, it didn't, no. Yeah, the space was a, uh, a mess, but... Uh, I was sitting in the sauna two days before, and I was like, there's no chance this is happening. Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, thanks Fitness for training up over looked, looked excellent. Yeah, yeah, that was great. That was uh, really... It was kind of a, a special moment to see it, kind of mm -hmm. like, all right, the vision is playing out, and... Um, it's one step closer to being finalized. Yeah, yeah, we had Derek lead the uh, fitness training, fantastic teacher, instructor, and uh, everyone seemed to have enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, um, we still have work to do. The, the space is not complete, um, but it's... Uh, it's functional now. Yeah. You could get a quality workout in every part of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, and now I feel like uh, there's another fire lit you know, mm -hmm. to get things moving quicker, just to get the, you know, everything complete. But yeah, super exciting. And uh, there's going to be a vlog released uh, this week too. Mm -hmm. Within the next few days. You know who was the cameraman the whole time? Uh, who was that? It was your son. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You, you oh, were like, tell him cool. to do something. I was like, here. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, they really uh, love, uh, you know, all things uh, audio, video, content creation so yeah definitely we try to get some good foot george got a bunch of good footage of the people training so the cinematic sequence in the vlog will be really good so if you worked out check it out because there's going to be good footage of you um as far as us talking i try to get ebro to rip some promos <laughs> but he got way too disrespectful right away and it's just, like, <laughs> just he would just start breaking stuff and i was like <laughs> wwf promo yeah, yeah i keep saying wwf i, for, I forgot it's that was like 40 years ago yeah, yeah. And they changed like 40 years ago. It was like the Great Sheik or whatever. <laughs> the Iron Sheik and <laughs> like before Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Not yeah. really. I'm, I'm exaggerating. But yeah, that, it's been WWE for a long time. I don't think I was alive when it was WWF. I, only no, I feel it. like it was like 90s, no? I, I, knew a, I knew a guy in that from my college. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Who's that? Sonny Dinza. I don't know. I forget what his like fake name is. It's like that <laughs> team of anarchy or something. But he's, he's teamed up with this uh albanian dude he's really big sonny's like a big punjabi guy mm. so yeah. he's active now yeah he like went to like a tryout it was like years ago in like florida and he's giant he's a giant heavyweight he looks all mean on tv but he's a super nice guy mm. he's a good canadian wrestler and There's he's got he's like a tag team it was like the like kids of anarchy or something you know some silly like wrestling name yeah. but they're like doing pretty well they tour and they jump off the ropes and <laughs> it's pretty cool i'm like wow because you know i'm in real life it's weird <laughs> to see like i don't even know what to call that stuff like it's not sports it's not like theater true theater it's kind of a it's a strange amalgam of of you know like trashy america and and like illiteracy <laughs> have you ever <laughs> like, been to one live Live? Yeah. No. I've heard they're incredible. Why? Like, I've heard they're just so much fun to watch. Like, mm. And because I, I, they interact with the crowd a lot and stuff. So I've, I've heard they're just like going is just very fun as a spectator. I bet it, it must be. I never got the appeal. That's like one integer past NASCAR on the spectrum <laughs> of like parts of America I'm not familiar <laughs> with. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. It's brother. like, so they yeah. only take left turns at 200 yeah. miles an hour. It's like, this is not a sport I'm going to get into. Then like further down the road, it's like rodeo. I didn't like know. the far end. It's they like only do WWE. Left. They only do left turns. I think no. so. They go in a circle, right? You can't. They never take... start on the other side. Oh, that's. I that's think actually... they just go left. Damn. Only left. Like it's I think the cars left. are even set up with like different. Like the suspension isn't fifty fifty like a road car. It's like a little bit like designed to just be 
crank into the left That's constantly hilarious. at 200, That's you know, because you go left. So I bet your tire configuration, it's not F1. It's a, yeah. it's a very weird American <laughs> sport. Like you just go, get in the, the stands have like half a million people in them. Like the, the bleachers. Yeah. Really? yeah. It's like something like 450,000. They're like oh. the biggest stadiums, if you can even call that, in the world. Like, I didn't understand that for a long time. And then a f- like probably like last month, I went to Fox Lake with some of the boys. And uh, our friend has like golf carts and ATVs and like jet skis. And I was like, oh, I fully understand this like this redneck life. Like we go to the <laughs> lake and we just play with toys. Like this is so fun. I could, I could see how that can escalate to like... You want to see this car that I got that goes 200 miles an hour? <laughs> you want to see them take <laughs> well, left turns? Well, they, they used to be stock cars, mm-hmm. right? That's that's why it's called stock cars. They used to be like cars that were off the factory mm-hmm. line, and then they were like allowed to change a little bit and then change a little bit more. And pretty, you know, it's obviously you could either say evolved or devolved into the <laughs> into the uh, iconic, you know like American race. And I know this is what I've told from been told by someone who was really into the sport. It was Canadian, which is weird. He's like, we watch it because they crash Mm. and they bump into each other while they're driving. And it's like kind of okay. So he was like a motorsport guy. Uh He used to race motorcycles and real cool guy, wrestler, very good wrestler. And he's like, they crash at 200 miles an hour. Like they bump a lot. And like, that's where, they're like, whoa. Oh, like, they're allowed you know, to purposely bump it? I don't know about purposely, but like they get away with it. It's like a, it's like bumper cars, but like very serious because mm. you might die. Do you oh, guys remember man. that movie where there was these guys racing? One of them was a ghost or something. Talladega Nights or whatever? No, this was in the 80s. And then this guy would appear <laughs> as your, your... Oh, Ghost Rider. No, ghost the, Rider. No, 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 no this was a different... This, this guy would basically cause you to crash into him and die. No, I don't oh. remember that. What? So, someone in the comment sections. Uh, Candyman. Remind me, what movie? This is one of my favorite movies from childhood. They got one of the characters used to drink gasoline. Ugh. No. It's brutal. I gotta figure this one out. <laughs> all was, the good movies are from my childhood. I was not prepared for that. You know, drink gasoline, <laughs> like what? <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's uh, man. I think Charlie Sheen is in it. Charlie Sheen. Is no, it? man. I'm. I don't know. You know movies I've never even heard of, and you're yeah. you're so aware of them. You're like, you know that one movie, like Rocky fourteen, where he's like, he's fighting aliens. <laughs> yeah, I stopped watching I that there. after the '90s. I don't I haven't really watched most of my favorite movies are '80s and '90s because they keep kind of it seems like you're just uh, recycling the the same storylines. There's not mm. that many stories when you really like break it down. There's archetypes, and they just you have to recycle the archetypes. There's heroes. There's mothers. Right there's like tyrants, there's just kings, there's there's tricksters, like there's these these characters, and that's what you know makes a really masterful storyteller good at their craft is that they can make their story more real than reality, mm-hmm. which seems paradoxical at first, but it it's true in a sense that like it can elicit truisms about life that sometimes you have trouble articulating when you make it about a personal experience or something that you saw in real life you know and that's what shakespeare was really you know masterful at hmm. he he could find those characters and then when you see the characters and you know them well you'd be like oh look at this guy that's a macbeth look at this guy that's a king lear mm. that's a yeah, that's a so and so and you can like recognize the characters and you're like and then you see them in other places. You're like, it's a, it's an archetype that happens over and over. It's the like, archetype of like Moses, the, the archetype of, of Pharaoh. Yeah, that's what was Star Wars was based on, what? the hero's journey, and that's what made Star Wars a good movie. It's silly when you describe it, you're like laser swords, like in your, your, it sounds like the nerdiest thing ever. But they did a really good job of keeping it on strong archetypes of character and of plot, and you know really. You know, some one of the theories of literature that there's only three types of narrative. You have like epic, comedy, and tragedy, and they're really always blendings of the three with a focus on one. But when you study like what story is, it's trying to understand what we go through, like us as individuals, in a deeper way. And so you have to use the surreality to understand reality. And that's where Hollywood is failing right now because now we just have like this. You know monstrosities of the Marvel of movies. Film. I think it was Scorsese. He he said like I don't know what this stuff is. He's like I'm not trying to knock it, but it's not cinema. 
-hmm. And so he he was talking about like Transformers and uh, the Marvel stuff. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. like, I don't know what it is, but it's not cinema. And I th and I think what he was trying to articulate was that there was something in classic cinema that was true to the storyteller as an archetype itself. Like there was something Homerian in it. You know, there was something where you're like telling a story in a human way that you could maybe find a parallel between the the Hopi Indians telling their world origins story as to as opposed to like a Chui Ghanaian person telling like a, a story from Africa. They seem really, you know, uh, different and set far apart. But when you look at story across the breadth of human experience, there's like certain patterns that reemerge and we've kind of broken from those patterns in the age of extreme commercialism and materialism i think though i think the marvels and those types of movies are more of world build building movies like the whole goal is to build like this world that the fans can be obsessed with and like uh like avatar you know that movie mm -hmm. with the blue people like people learn the blue that people like people learn that language the navi language you know, like uh, I'm that, a, what a waste! I of swear, time. I swear, it's crazy. And That's then, worse than learning like Elvish from Lord of the Rings, dude. When I get bored, I, I really like Harry Potter. You've, you've caught me Harry, reading Harry Potter books, I have. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but I watch YouTube. You were videos. so ashamed too. I was like, "What are you reading?" And yeah. You looked up, like you paused for a minute. You're like, "Should I lie?" <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> That's cool. Like, and you, you know cover? what though? Like, she did a good job with those mm -hmm. stories. In, in drawing on archetypes, you know, the, the, the connection to the snake and like the, the interesting, like she thing, had some, some deep concepts. The interesting thing about the Harry Potter movies, stop me if, if this gets way too bad, but those are actually mystery books and that's why people <laughs> like them. So yeah, both think about it. The Philosopher's Stone, what's the whole, what's the whole, the first movie, what's it about? It's finding that stone. There's the, the oh, there's the mystery of that stone going to go, go find it. Number two. Chamber of Secrets. It's what's what is hiding in the Chamber of Secrets. What is the monster that's killing everybody? Like it's every single book is a mystery book. Doug, start a Harry Potter podcast. Mystery is. A I'm just saying. Fascinating like, concept. I, yeah. I can't remember who said this, but they said every story is one of two things. It's either someone going on a journey or a stranger coming to town, mm -hmm. and both totally of those things are about the unexplored. You know, mystery mm -hmm. is definitely part of story because if you know the ending it's not a story anymore like if you know where it's going you're like well, that's not a that's mm -hmm. not a story <laughs> yeah. that's just a memory but see i don't know if this is something newer or this has just always been the case but uh, uh it seems like i've seen more and more movies start to have musicians and different types of celebrities that don't have acting experience but they get into like a you know, pretty big uh, movie with a pretty decent role. And the only thing you can make sense of, at least I can, is like maybe it's you're trying to do better at the box office because they're bringing in the crowd. Like if you're a fan of... Well, it's also indicative of the, the barriers of entry to acting, which are minimal. You cannot just show up and go toe to toe with a neurosurgeon. You can't walk into a professional fight and compete without training. You can't, right? You can't show up with like a real, prof you can't just show up and be like, I'm gonna do engineering today. But acting at the highest level has children, six, seven years old, working alongside, you know, what we consider professionals. Acting is in a way childish. Right? And it's not to demean it, but it's like there's something about exploring the imagination in that sort of detached from your own self way that's like very childlike. And so there's very few professions where a child can compete with an adult in a non-satirical way. Like it's not a joke. They're like, yeah, that child is like the star and this guy is also the star. And it's like not a joke. And it's also, it's you know, it shows you it's like it's. It's accessible to people in a way that that uh, you know more difficultly acquired skills are not. You cannot have a celebrity like like they'll take just a basketball player. I think LeBron James is in a movie right now. It's like a remake of Space Jam, the Michael Jordan thing, right? Another two basketball players, no acting experience. They walk in and they're in a the highest levels of financial production film. You can't just take a film guy and make him like play an NBA game with like six months of prep impossible right so 
it doesn't make everyone feel the best to hear that, but like the barrier to entry of that skill set is remarkably low compared to the, some of the celebrity uh, skill sets that they try to draw into that. So you don't, you can't just take like a random actor and be like, all right, man, like learn an instrument, <laughs> you know, go be a pro athlete. That reminds go me of a, a story where, sorry to cut you off. Uh, not at all. I, I remember a long time ago, probably at least 15 years ago, uh, me and my buddies went to a comedy show, and uh, one of my friends, who's just naturally funny, um, he went on stage. It was a, I think it was one of those nights where they invited that, mm -hmm. and he is just uh, naturally funny. And uh, but he was breaking. There's rules when you're a stage performer, right? Like don't turn your back to the audience, and just basic things that you know um, you're taught. And he's breaking all the rules. Just I, I, I did a. I've taken a few acting classes in high school, and I'm aware of the rules. But I was aware enough to know that he's breaking all of them. And I'm looking at the <laughs> the people who are part of the you know the regulars. A lot of them don't look like they're happy with the the applause he's getting from the audience mm -hmm. because prob I would assume it's because he's breaking the rules. You know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, to your point, I mean, there's some people who can. You know, day one, do a pretty decent job just off natural ability. But that's not happening for a lot of other uh, areas, right? You can't just walk on a basketball court and dominate, you know, if you haven't practiced. And I, would, I would say that comedy is not one of those fields because you do have to have some talent to actually make people laugh. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, a lot of people that try and fail at the comedic or in the, in the particularly American genre of well, stand-up. Comedy, you're writing your own material too. So they're writers. Mm -hmm. They're not just being handed a script and spinning it back out. They're, they're create, like tr drawing from their life, writing it, learning a cadence, learning a rhythm in which to perform it on stage. I, get that. I feel like it's a completely different skill set. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we we were all over the place. Uh, this was... Uh... Supposed to be 10 minutes long. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, we're actually, the, the reason why today's uh, episode is going to be a little bit short, we are actually open now. People are starting to come in. Mm -hmm. We are a little bit behind our tasks. And um, this is just the reality. You know, um, we are a work in progress. And um, that's the way I think it's always going to be. We're always going to be updating and improving and adjusting. And uh, we're in the midst of a little bit of everything right now. So uh, thank you all for tuning in. Keep an eye out on our channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe to keep updated. But uh, in the next few days, we plan to have uh, a vlog uh, giving a little bit more insights to exactly uh, this weekend's events. And uh, to all our members of the community, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your support. Uh, we're going to be uh, doing everything on our end to keep adding value here and to uh, provide value in your life. So thank you for being a value in our life and uh, continuing to support. Before we let uh, this episode come to a conclusion, anything else you guys wanna get out there? The online store is live. It is It is finally live, we got it up there. Are some uh, pieces of merchandise left from the Ben Down and Drop that are up and uh, available on the store. We'd love if you support on there. If you if you couldn't make it on Saturday and you were like just thinking about buying it when next time you come train, do it on the online store because that's where we're doing the rest of the, the sales, like it's all. All there. Yeah, it's right now it's DTJJC.shop, right? Yep. Yeah, so at the moment, um, that is the address, DTJJC.shop. And, um, yeah, our goal is to keep all these different projects. Our goal is to take them seriously. And um, at the moment, we're in the midst of handling a little bit of everything. So we have been experiencing a little bit of delay with some of the uh, tasks. But... Um, we're on a mission to get uh, things more and more efficient and to uh, be at our best. So uh, keep an eye out for all things Downtown Jiu-Jitsu Club. Again, thank you for tuning in and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace. Peace. Peace.